welcome to my watercolour butterfly design set workshop. In this workshop we're going to be creating some beautiful delicate butterflies with watercolours. I really hope you guys enjoy it so let's get started. Welcome to my watercolour butterfly design set. So this is what I'm going to be sharing with you all today. And this little beauty is done in watercolour and is absolutely stunning. So I'm going to show you, as you can see, I've already done that one. And I'm going to show you how to do it in two different colourways, okay, and two different positions of the butterfly as well. So I've already got my uh, two coats of gel polish and I've actually mixed this gel polish. So the green is Jungle Jive mixed with Innocence, which is on white. And the pink is Candy Kisses mixed with white again to give this really soft pastel shade. I've done two coats of that mix and then I've gone in with my matte top coat and that has given me a really nice, smooth, even base to be able to do my butterflies on. So the first butterfly I'm going to show you how to do is a full butterfly. So both wings open. So the watercolours that I use are Windsor and Newton. Um, and I've got the full set of the colours. And I use a little palette like this. So I've already pre-mixed my colours. So in here... We have got the red, the blue, and the green, and the white. I've mixed the red and the white to create this really lovely soft pink. I've used the white, the red, and the blue to create this purple. And then I've used the green and the white to create my green. Okay, so super simple mixing of our colours to get the correct shades that we want. So I'm going to use the same colour as my background for my butterflies. So with watercolours, you can see these have started to dry out slightly here, but if you just go in and add a little bit of water, they literally come back to life. So these colours could be in here for weeks, add a little bit of water and it completely rejuvenates them and brings them back to a workable consistency. So another top tip, I keep my, um, water for my watercolours in a wine glass and that enables me to have how far I'm dipping my brush into the water at eye level so I have full control of how much water I'm soaking up into my brush. I've also got a piece of tissue just by the side of me that I'm going to use to wipe off any excess. So our first butterfly is going to be a really beautiful open butterfly. So I'm just going to go into my pink and I'm going to pop. It's going to be slightly larger than the first one that I did. I'm going to pop my initial shape of my top wing in. So it is just a soft triangle. OK, so you can see there the body is going to be coming down at an angle like this. And I'm going to bring this, I've just added a little bit more water to my brush, just to soften out that pink tone. Okay, so we don't want anything too hard or too dramatic. We want this whole design to be really beautiful and soft. So I'm going to go back into my pink again and load up my brush and do the other side. So again, coming up and round and it's going to be coming off of the nail slightly, which I think looks really beautiful. And I'm not going to connect these two. I want to leave a gap because you don't want your watercolour to start to spread into the colour that you've worked before. Because obviously it is air dry. So it does mean that until these have dried on their own accord they are going to want to spread into one another. So again, just going in with a little bit of water. I haven't added any colour to this at all. And just dispersing out that product into that negative space. And you can see already that we've created shading with this. Okay, 
So again, going into my pink, and now I'm going to do my lower wings, which are going to be really soft heart shapes. So again, coming around, tucking that in, and then bringing it back out. So you can see it's like an upside down heart. Okay. Again, going into my water, just a tiny little bit, literally just dipping the tip of my brush in and then dispersing that product so that we haven't got any harsh lines whatsoever. So you can see I'm hardly touching the nail with my brush and just moving that colour around exactly where I want it. And then again, I'm going to come this side and this bottom wing, like this top wing, is going to be coming off of the nail. So I'm going to go as close as I can and then just put that curve in there. Again, going into my water and then just dispersing that product or watercolour, I should say, out so that we create that outline and that really soft inside line. So there you have it. That is our base for this butterfly done. So I'm going to pop that to one side because like I say, it is air dry. So I need to let that fully dry before I go in and do anything else. So I'm now going to go into my green. So just adding some water in there. And this time we are going to do a half butterfly. So like it is flying across the nail. Okay. So Again, it's going to be a soft heart shape. So putting in that top curve of that wing and then bringing that down, round and out and bringing it down. Again, going into my water. If you do pick up too much water, just wipe it off onto your tissue and go in again. And then just again, dispersing that product out into that negative space. And just teasing that colour down where we want it. All right. Again, going into my green, I'm going to create this bottom uh, part of the wing. And that again is going to be a really soft triangular heart shape. Going down into my water, just literally touching the tip of my brush into my water. You can see how much this brush just sucks up that water. And another top tip for you, don't use your same brushes that you use for gel polish to do your watercolour. You need to have separate brushes. So there we go. That is the base of those tips done. So by the time I've done that, this one is pretty much dry. So I'm going to clean off my brush just by giving it a little wiggle in my water, cleaning off or wiping off, I should say, my brush so that it keeps, it doesn't have too much moisture in there. And I'm just mixing a slightly darker pink. So I'm going into my pink with my red into the same area of the palette. I love it when a palette starts to look messy and creative like this. So I've just cleaned off my brush, okay? And turning my brush onto the paper so it goes into a really nice taper. And then I'm going to go into this dark pink and I'm not going to add too much water to it. So I'm going to now come in and accentuate these outlines and also in here where the body is going to be. And then I'm just going to use a tapping motion just to tap that out. And then we are going to add some water to that to be able to blend that out a little bit more. So I'm going to pop a little bit of water onto the tip of my brush, into my pink, my light pink, 
and then go in and lay it down right next to where we have just put that dark colour and then I'm going to clean off my brush and start to merge those colours together. So again, it's really soft and subtle. And then merging it out into that negative space. So again, just tap, tap, tap ever so lightly. Just tickle that product where you want it to go. And that will create a really nice soft shading effect on our wing. So I'm going to continue to do that all the way around. So at the top, bring it down and around my edge. And then also where the body is going to be sitting and just feather that out, tap it out. And then into my lighter pink. Again, lay it down next to it. Clean off my brush. And then just how to soften that line with the residual moisture that we have in our watercolour. You don't want any hard lines in here. They need to be nice and soft. So I'm going to continue to do that along here into my lower wings. Just tap and blend out that colour, carrying it where we want it to go. And the same on this one. Adding a little bit of water. And then pulling that round. So again, that's going to go to the side and just sit and wait for its turn once it has dried up. Then I'm going to go into my darker green and do exactly the same along here. So again, going in on the edge of that wing and also where the body is going to be. And then tapering that out with my lighter green. I'm going to add a little bit of water to my brush. Just to give me a little bit more slip. There we go. And then bring that round. So watercolours are really forgiving because they are so soft in how they are placed. So you just need to learn how to control your medium. And it really is the lightest of touches. You don't want anything too hard to create that brush stroke. And we don't want to be disturbing that colour underneath. So you're literally just laying it on top and being really, really gentle with it. I'm just going into my dark green and I'm just going to darken this down ever so slightly. Okay, and that's now going to go into standby. So now we have got this beautiful base of our pink done. So I'm now going to go in with Material Girl, which is our matte top coat. And I'm going to seal this in because we're going to do some detail work on it now. And unlike gel polish, this is obviously air dry. So if we were to make a mistake, you want this to be sealed in so that we do not disturb any of that work that we have done underneath. So that's now going to go into the lamp for a nice, even full cure. 
which is 60 seconds. I'm just going to help this along a little bit. As you can see, it's still quite shiny. And then I'm going to go in with my matte top coat. And obviously, if we were doing this on a client, we would be steering clear of their cuticle side walls and also capping that free edge. So again, making sure that we've got a nice even coverage of our matte top coat. And then that's going to go in to the lamp for a full cure. So our pink butterfly has now come out from the lamp. And I'm going to go in with a super fine watercolour brush. And I'm going to go into black. So I'm just going to add a bit of water to it just to bring it back to life. And then I'm going to go into my black and create a super fine outline for this. So I'm going to do his body first, just to give me an area to be able to work with. So just bringing that down and around into my taper. Okay. And then I'm going to clean off my brush slightly and come from there and bring my outline for the bottom of the wing. And you can see it's there, but hardly there at all. You can thicken it up, but just following that contour and then bringing it round. Okay, so again, I'm going to come from here and just bring that round. I'm going to do that on all of my wings. So bringing that one round. And then doing my bottom wings as well. So I'm just going to bring that round and I'm going to flick that up into the wing and bring this one round like so and then this one in exactly the same way. Okay, so again, I'm going to go into my dark pink now and add some more shading. And this is going to soften that black as well. So I'm just going to pop that there and come back to it in a second and come in here. And then I'm going to go in with my larger brush, a little bit of water. And then just bring that out and soften it out. Like so. I'm being a little bit bolder now with my shading. Because all of that pink that's underneath has now been secured underneath that matte top coat. So it means that we can go in with our shading and be a little harsher to create the depth that we want. And then in here, A little bit of water. Now I'm going to go into my white and this is going to help to add some highlights. 
So I've really watered down my white. It's almost see-through. It's not opaque at all. And we're going to come in and add some highlights in there. And then just feather that out. Like so. Bringing that highlight, just accentuating it. And this one here. So now I'm going to create some little tiny antennae. So with my detailer brush, just bringing that up. And I want them to be uneven and quite long as well. Okay, and then I'm just going to pop a little teardrop shape just at the end. Bring that in. And taper that down into that antennae. So I'm now going to go into my black and just create a little bit of interest coming through these wings. Like so. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just give it a little wiggle. And if it's too heavy, you can go in with a clean dry brush and just remove that excess. So that's now gonna go on standby. My green nail has now come out and we're gonna pop in our outline and our body. So this body is coming down round because he is flying. So we can just see half of that wing. And then we're going to come up and around the outside. All the way around. And then coming down like so. Okay, while I'm here again, I'm going to pop in the antennae. So coming up slightly longer with this one and shorter with this one. And then again, popping those little details into the top. So now I'm going to go again into my darker green and add a little bit more depth in here. Also on this edge and then going into my water with a nice clean brush and I'm going to start to taper that out. If you have too much just go in with a dry brush and that will soak up that excess and then just push that colour back where you want it. 
okay and now I'm going to go into my white and create that little bit of highlight in there and like I say because that lower colour has been sealed in we can be that little bit more firm with our brush strokes so now I'm going to go into my black and add a little bit of feathering through those wings Just randomly going through. So that's now going to go to one side. I've got a little bit of my shiny top coat because I want to keep the difference between our matte and our shiny. So I'm going to put the bulk of my shiny top coat in the center of this wing and then I'm going to pull that out and just float it out to that edge. And that will stop us from overflowing. So don't be tempted to do your edges first. You want to go into the centre like so with that top coat. And this is a no wipe top coat as well. And make sure you take it all the way to the edge of that watercolour. Otherwise it won't get sealed in. It will wash off. So especially if we're doing this on a client you're going to need to make sure that you've covered all of those elements really, really well. And, you know, there's nothing stopping you from doing this entire design mat or doing it shiny. It's up to you. But I do really love the contrast between the mat and the shiny. So not forgetting to go over his body. And then I'm also going to pop a little bit at the tip and then bring it down his antennae. So that's now going to go into the lamp for a full cure. I'm going to do exactly the same on my little green butterfly. So again, starting in the center of his wing and then pushing that product out all the way to the edge. If you need more, again, distribute it from the center and then pull it out all the way to the edge again pull this one out all the way to the edge not forgetting his body or his antennae so again just going over the top, starting at the top and then flowing it down to your taper at the bottom. And there you have it. So this is the pink now that I've shown you. I've done a slightly fatter butterfly and a thinner butterfly just to show you the difference, but using exactly the same technique. And that shiny against that matte is just absolutely stunning. I love it love 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 it and i love the softness that watercolor gives to these really delicate little butterflies and there's our green butterfly and that completes this workshop i really hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please make sure you click the subscribe button and if you want to see any future videos just click them below thank you all so much for joining me and i'll see you all soon